All right, we are back with the Bavarian Base Days, and we have with us now in detail Professor Petru Yuga, and he is going to talk about the Van Hall Concerto. And if you want to check out the PDF files, go into documentation, and you've got uh, files there under um, the Van Hall Concerto area, so you can download those and print them at your leisure. And I will now hand it over to Professor Yuga. Thank you so much, ma'am. Hello, everyone. <laughs> oh, this is really uh, an experience for me um, to, to talk. It's the first time I do these webinars and um, I just have to have you all in my mind or my spirit that you are there and uh, yeah so i'm very glad to be part of this um event organized by klaus freudenstein uh, he does a great job for our instrument and uh, a very successful Base building. Unfortunately, I couldn't go to the to Mühldorf, and I say hello to all of my dear friends and colleagues. And um, yeah, I hope we'll get a better times for sure. We are optimistic, and um, to see in person, and we're going to celebrate and enjoy even more even better um, and even more, like I said, the base. So I decided to talk about Van Hal because also um, Klaus proposed to speak about one of the important concerts, um, what our instrument um, is um, generally Post in auditions or solo concerts, but in, normally in auditions and also in the competition, many people choose Van Hal. So, and also in, a, in audition, mostly for orchestra, for positions. And is a concerto what it's nearly our bread. We, we're going to win our bread with this concerto and, of course, others, also Bittersdorf. So, uh, I'm not going to talk historically about, about um, the concerto because there's already a lot of information online, even made by um, Tobias Glöckner and so, and Trumpf also did a lot of research. But um, I think this, like the historical part, I'm going to take, take it. Or put it by side and uh, just I'll, I'll, I'll talk about the decision I made myself um, about the piece. So probably you know just this is important details that um, Van Hal did study with Dittersdorf <laughs> so that's kind of uh, interesting relations um, and he wrote a lot of symphonies, like 73 concertos, not too many, but you know, for flute, for piano, for cello has two concertos. And um, so what I, what, what I decided to, to do with the manuscript um, written by, um, or the made by, the edition made by the Gertner. I took this one and, and mixed with, um, let's say, tra uh, traditionally um, uh, edition, while well, the people was used to play so many years um, with Trump, uh, sorry, Trump edition, <laughs> okay? So, um, 
what I really uh, want to say that I mostly work with concerto from the piano part. And I can say and that I discover also cert certain articulations, mostly from, um, from the orchestra for violence, what I'm using in the, um, in the in the playing in my solo playing. So um, I also play in the Viennese tuning. So I kind of have in my ear how it does sound in the Viennese tuning. But you know you probably could imagine that no one can know how the people at that time did play this concerto. So I think we have to give the spirit um, to the piece. We will look at the manuscripts and, and try to uh, respect the, the text. But in the end, it's uh, ourselves who put give life to give to show to give the message we are interprets so that's why um, we interpret the music was written and give to the people so that's why I think nobody knows um, like I said who how was played at that time and we can correlate with our time so if in 200 years someone will ask how did they play at that time? Probably they will more know because now videos and they will, whatever, it's recording, a lot of recording, but um, I think it's not essential to um, so much that we have to try to play like that time. We have to imagine the times, how the people were living and uh, what they, what the influence they had or what they probably spiritually thought about and this make for sure us to get a more rich information about the composer, about the piece, about the period they was written, the, more, the influences they had. Um, so we know Vienna Classic was a lot of Mozart, um, Haydn, actually Haydn, <laughs> no? And um, that's why it's important to, to look from this side and um, in the end is the, the message, the, the idea we present ourselves is it's the most important. So actually what I'm going to do is kind of tutorials about the piece, about the first movement, because the time is not that uh, much. And already I talk about eight minutes. So <laughs> um, let's go to the piece. I hope that the sound will be not terrible because we had a check with Kristen and that was not an easy thing. So it will be not easy for me to try to play good sound or big sound or I'll try to play less and um, try to, you know, I hope that the, the sound is coming well to you. Okay, so what is essential before we start to play as a soloist to, um, to know what has happened before. So I think we have this, the violin, it's written the part, what I use, and you have, uh, you can download, it's just the first page of the piano part, I have a manuscript, it was Doblinger in the very old edition by Malarich, but uh, Tobias Lerner has also put the instruments, which instruments are playing um, in orchestra. So it's good for us to know with whom we play and, and to try to, you know, to play in this, in this direction that it sounds really good, like chamber music. It's not only that we are allowed, you are doubled allowed, allowed by the violence the first violence and sometimes the second violin. Okay, so we have this uh, beginning, like a three bars before. Uh... Okay. 
So this is important to know that we have this uh, introduction and it's finishing with this passage. And we take over, and then we take this one. So that's, uh, that's why it's important to, to know that we're not going to start that loud. We just have to take over the sound of the, and then we take another. We start, of course, because it's on the one, but we, nobody plays here. So it's, of course, our presentation, like you say, hello, welcome. So um, that's why it's important to, to know what is, what is related with. And then the Boeings I do use uh, in this part at the beginning, it's actually inspired by the violins because if you look on the page on the piano part, it's written violins. There is a legato, the, the release, and that's the heavy point. So, and this is uh, where the orchestra also enters. And the bass is a string part. And um, so that's why I choose this, this boing. It's not written in any edition. Some people make uh, like a two leg out and up. It's also a good decision, but uh, I think so my this my let's say taste is that if the violin started already this boing, it's kind of um, nice to take it over. <laughs> okay, so then uh, I hope the sound is okay, guys. Um, I know it's not that easy. It's actually and, working okay. Great, I'm happy. I'm happy, Christine. That's um, it's working okay. I try not to play too loud because I know the microphone reacts and then it goes apart. So, um, good. So after this beginning, we'll think actually melodically, you know, like a singer, um, we release the do it's our first note. So actually, and when you do it a vibrato, of course, if you um, play in our days in audition, even in competition, I think it's good to start an expressive. I mean, of course, if we start it in a, in a bit like uh, historically, we'll, uh, we'll play a bit less, uh, less expressive. And, um, but I now show a version what I do also play myself and I study with the students. Um, and generally for auditions and uh, also for competitions. So there's a bit of a romantical version for the left hand, but the articulation stays um, for the right hand is the typical classical part. And then I continue as a... Here we have typical um, classical Apoggiaturas, that I think it's a. We should always do this second way, no? So. And continue. Because here we are with. With a violin, so we have to be very precise um, that we make the phrase together. So up to here we. With the violins. So actually, appoggiatura is the strong and, and, and lighter one. So actually, the phrase is starting here and here. So if I you could start to sing the second verse, of course, that's a bit what I did. Um, for, for some people difficult, but it's very good to is you, you incorporate your, your music with a group. So this is the first phrase. And then comes uh, an answer of joy. And I play 
more more articulated uh, more like more rhythmic like timpani that's kind of the answer so I just wanted to say shortly about this one I know some people play the uh, appoggiaturas short but it's not cut so that means it's appoggiatura has always is a louder than the resolution so that's why I'm not agree it's actually that's what is correct to play actually and this is a kind of uh, the scale down so um will be a good sound and generally i after the really uh, try to have um, a very horizontal but uh, melodic uh, playing with a lot of it's a sexta chord, and I will release here. And then what is coming is a little bit less, but not that less like piano, what is written in uh, trumpf edition. As a, I do, I do play a little bit strong because the modulation. I always um, think. Analyzing the piece to, from three with three parameters. Actually, I I look, of course, the the intonation, the rhythm, and the sound. This is three. What I uh, it's important to to observe during playing. But for phrasing, I use the melodic phrasing. I use the rhythmical metric phrasing and the harmonical phrasing. Okay, so also I tell to my students that European music actually has the harmony, the harmony used, the, the way they use the harmony that make European music more spatial compared with others, um, other music like Asian or Arabic or Indian or where it's more written. Um, so, from these three points, I analyze the phrase. So you see, the beginning is uh, we have C major, no, so D major. So then we go to dominant. That's why we come here. This is the modulation, okay? So the, the this upbeat, what I want to say, why I don't want to play it piano, so I want to come with the idea, is because uh, this is a lot of information. to dominant and it's still dominant with the sub dominant so up to the up to the sub dominant sub dominant I'm going to make the question but here is a, and this chromatic part I'm going to use of course a certain density in the in the bow to support this chromatism. But to come back, it's a, a little bit louder. And here I release. There's Chendo, I connect to here as so. Because it's the 16th, is actually articulated. So you see, I, I use, of course, the melodic phrasing, but now it's not the metric. Not the metric part uh, more important that means on the one strong, second weak, third strong, four weak, and one, two, three, four, one. Here, 
will be even it's one but it's a I use a, let's say the metric the, the rhythmical phrasing where the 16th have to be really talked really well so that's why I don't stop on this I continue that I really uh, the phrase is continuing there so and then I release here to go to the piano to build the next phrase. Um, so after this, I use also this kind of fingering. It's kind of ringing more. So I look that the instrument rings like the Vienna Viennese tuning mostly. And so sometimes I experiment with the fingerings. But uh, for sure, it's also very good. It's always on the same string. My thought if I release here. I release and then it's a shorter, it's the same note. That's why I use the flageolet one and come again. Uh, it's kind of appoggiatura to up, not appoggiatura to down. And release. So here I, I play this version uh, like an original, you know, like a Trumpf's uh, edition. I think it's, it's kind of uh, nice <laughs> and nice phrase. It's nothing complicated. Here, this is a bridge, is a bridge to the next, to the next um, theme. Um, so, what I think here is important, of course, also in auditions, is to, of course, the sound, the, the metrical part, the stability of the, of the tempo, the articulations, of course, but comes now one stroke, but everybody's struggling at the beginning with it, it's a spiccato. So um, I think here, so it's a Mozart spiccato like we have in, uh, in, um, in, in the symphonies for Mozart in auditions. So we'll be a little bit closer to the string first time. <laughs> sound well proportions that we hear really the melody so <laughs> the phrase is going to, to come until here of course I look for the really the sound that is ringing and is it is clear so and of course, basic. So what is coming next? Uh, finally, again, that, uh, so originally it was, that's why I try to play uh, in this typical, Mostly the students do this. Uh, and yes, of course, you have to know very well. The, but I do think, I think D and prepare the lamp that is kind of coarse. So I, I try in the fingerings, but it's coming next very much closer to the original Viennese tuning. So we are we have the heavy point short and then we rest 
Floriturals kind of uh, the sixteens. They should be played melodic, but the, uh, all the the, inform the information is this. Uh, this is always this. This is harmonical, melodical. Let's say harmonical information. It stays quite obsessive on this on this mire sire. And it's resuding uh, in the bar 36 on the G on the G major in the dominant. So here we have to show a nice melody. So that we we have the line and that we show that. The classical articulation. So, classical articulation actually is a. So, uh, now, the idea is should we go to the first semester or go to the bay? For sure, not. Because, si re, mi re, re. Is the big the the one? So in this part plays a role the the metrical the metrical uh, phrasing and um, and then here comes here we have duets so. A lot in in classical, but it's coming from Baroque. They, they are called duets, and the duets normally are played like strong, weak, strong, weak. They're never um, the same tenuto. Like some people, most of the people, are used to play. So here are duets. That's why in generally. Uh, when you have the same letter, like A, no, like A, A, and you have to separate A, 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 whatever in a word with this ending with an A, doesn't come now in my mind, but internally, that's the idea of the classical part that when you have, when you have the same notes, we should release and separate them a little bit. So here we have. and Trumpf uh, edition did propose. I do stay here. Because it's sound, I think, very good. If you equalize from the right hand, that you get this really well ringing sound. So this is figuration. So now we come to uh, um, let's say uh, compositoric um, way of doing uh, writing actually um, what is it's we call in classic Vienna classic fig figuration you know fig figurations it's just an arpeggios so there's no there's not a melodical part in, in, in the, let's say it's not like a melody, but it's more like figurations, uh, harmony. So that's why I try to. Uh, the, the harmony tension, you know. Like, and here's the resolution, she should not make a crescendo. Uh, or should not make a crescendo. So that means it's a. Uh, do play the Boeing is written there three plus one. So release and here down bow subdominant, so a bit stronger. And here is this 
stronger because it's the dominant of the dominant. Uh, so harmonically, I do make it this way, the phrase. And so I come back again. This is the sound. I do search this in the right hand, the sound of uh, of the Vienna Viennese student. Uh, and of course, we have repeating notes, so that's what is repeating notes. That's something dramatic all the time. So we have a lot in Dittersdorf, no? We love notes. Uh, because he was studying the Dittersdorf, that's why I wanted to say um, before that he was, Vanhalo was a student uh, of, uh, of Dittersdorf. So um, you see these repeating parts, it's dramatic and it goes, it has a lot of harmonical direction. And then what is coming next, here we could stay the same. I mostly change the octaves. For audition orchestra, I do with the students. I separate them. So I do separate because it's for the lower string, longer string, it's better to have more clear sound. But in the, when I play solo with orchestra, I do the same. I do try to have the same way, the same um, using three strings for this figuration. So the typical uh, one high in this situation. I never heard another Haydn or Mozart concert this kind of. So repeated figurations. And I think that even there, uh, the, like arpeggios, and normally arpeggios you play more of a rhythmical. I do think they're melodical. Actually, I think with the harmony. Okay, so my fingering are two either. You play this. <laughs> use this one or I do again legato and the same structure like here or uh, also sounds good so if I put this legato down like it's originally written I will I do change a little bit the way I do play with the right hand. So uh, get a little bit the, the lower notes. Make the line, you know. Because here is the loudest place, actually. It's not the modulation, uh, 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 re really in the G major, yeah? But this Re major, the D, D major, it should be very fast, very loud. The loudest place actually in this um, this first page or this beginning of the concerto. This is it's quite a joy, you know, <laughs> D major. You know, so actually it's an E major sounding. So for people who has absolute earring. Okay, so we come to the most joyful and a uh, beautiful place. So. so these repeating notes in generally are, you know, have to be clear and directed. And then I think we hear, we should not play long, so. and becomes a bit longer when we release the phrase because I think here it's good to release the phrase to a little bit prepare what is coming because now we have an, uh, here so, not too long, uh, and here 
in tempo di uno, due, tre, quattro. Bene, tutti qui, quasi in tempo. Tim, pi, la, 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 tim, pa, la, 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 tim, nine, three, four, ha, tim. It's easier for the conductor <laughs> and also for the orchestra if you play without the conductor. So, um, we come to this beautiful place where we could play, of course, piano, how it's written, or also for the is in a second um, version by Sperger. But I choose, to, of course, to play piano. It's a contrast. So after this choice of loud, it's quite a loud place in this major. It comes a dominant. So. <laughs> So it's, we play, okay, a piano dolce solistico, um, but a little bit defensive, yeah? So sweet, let's say. This part, I hope with the time, anyway, will not, uh, will not come that far. <laughs> but um, at least I could present uh, this beginning, and then I could, um, be open to questions um, if there are any. Okay, so I would say go ahead and play. I will explain technically. You've got a little extra time. There doesn't Sorry? appear to there doesn't appear to be any questions at this time. So um, you can keep uh, explaining until about okay. ten till. Excellent. I'm okay. really enjoying this. Okay. Sounds beautiful. Thank you very much, Kristen. Very kind. It's for me a, a challenge uh, to to try to talk to the camera, but it's it's wonderful. I I still imagine. I mean, anyway, Kristen is there, and I, for you and for others, probably also listening. So it's coming now. This beautiful part. What well, technical is not that easy. So if we. Uh, <laughs> to retake the bow uh, at the frog, so that's and develop the sound. Uh, one, three, four. So we have to go to the next part, the phrase. That's it's very important how you are in direction. So it's need a little, very good control of the speed of the bow. And also, let's say vibrato. So if we do it the vibrato, no vibrato, and the second beat, and to this note to release, and go to the appoggiatura, melodic, duets. I hear mostly not so well played this part. Um, so it's so important is the, the the speed of the bow, the coherence actually of the of the of the speed and the developing the direction of the of the phrase. So for me are is this uh goes to this this note and release. Before these duets are always a little bit separated, and of course goes to this um, modulation, this A sharp. Um, but fortunately, the, the new edition it's on the a bit so. Not that convincingly, I think this is really the idea of this dramaturgy. Half tones is always something painful, <laughs> chromatic. It's also in Bach, and even ourselves, if we complain, it's a bit chromatic. It's always a little bit like pain, you know. So that's why uh, 
it's I speculate a little bit this chromatic part. Okay, so very important goal the way we use the phrase, the direction, what is melodic, what is duets, and um, vibrato, of course, should be nice, not too much, not too romantic, and if possible, to use it in a different, not that I know vibrato. <laughs> A detail, I separate also vibrato in three, and there's a mix, anyway, it's always a mix of three. Um, it's vibrato continuously, the beginning of the note, and it's continuously like a bridge. There's a second one with no vibrato opening, so opening note with no vibrato vibrato, like this one. Taking care not to do too much right hand, so more left hand. And I turn the one the opposite. Relaxing. So at the beginning, you know, so you we relax with the diminuter. So and in this kind of vibrato stuff we use for expression for giving directions so the nose should not be. The long notes should not be uh, just accidentally in white. Of course, we can do a lot of things for the right hand. So I always work first the right hand because there is the music, there is the phrase, there is the breath. But the expression is left hand, so I make it even nicer. But of course, right hand has priority. The bow um, develops the sound, opening the uh, uh, give the color. Relaxed or picky or whatever, all these articulations. Actually, what is also what I say in the master class in Germany, our culture in Europe is also right hand mostly, because of course, left hand we can play fast or whatever, express it, but the right hand with the music expression, the, all the rhetoric parts, it's really in the right hand. And so that's why if we play classical music or romantical music is completely different attitude of the right hand. So that's why it's our daily, uh, let's say project to, to improve our right hand because um, she's the one to really actually speak. Of course, not ignoring this because this is, let's say the cognitive parts with notes and. And this is the vegetative part. We, it's more complex because we don't have really, we organize the base, the, the, the part. But um, yeah, it's more feeling, it's more breath. Yeah. So that's why we should practice a lot right hand. And in a classical music, we can really see what we do with the speed of the bow, with the place, how stable it is, how articulated it is. How here it is how this Boeing. <laughs> how important this two legato, two non legato um, bow stroke, so important, so many times is coming here. So, and then I go here for audition normally when I play for the, for the students for uh, jobs, I go tableau. <laughs> In a concert, when I play with the orchestra. <laughs> I stay the same on top. Of course, it's a bit more harder. But I think for, for getting a job is good if we are. I choose this fingering to play uh, like the same like up, G, F sharp on the D string. But what I also can do is a second finger, one and four. I can have also a good related melody if I play with fourth here, then even better. So we go to, to, to the D. So uh, this is also 
big challenge for us as bass players to play in a low position very well, very good legato, and also like mostly articulation. That's the most difficult to play in the orchestra, except. But um, also here. So that's why. I It's make a diminuendo to make a big crescendo, but I think it's it's first key because uh, kind of playing a little bit defensive, and then we can make a crescendo. Then we can make a play the harmony. So. of her comes to the big uh, okay so I just want to explain also technical uh, issue here most of the people play uh, so it goes to the to the strong but this we have anyway the orchestra who does this, of course, the metric part. But we have to play a bit the opposite. So, so the, this is more important than a, to go to this note, but. Share one impression, and I think I'm. Uh, um, if I'm not wrong, it's written the manuscript octaves here. So, like I said, yes, but the second note, I mean, the articulation is written is. Um, so the second group, it's it's uh, legato. So. I speculated probably it was also like Vivaldi did use this kind of two. Yeah, Christian, I think we are kind of in the end now. Yes, it? we are. We're getting ready to broadcast the like concert. One minute. Here. Yes. I just wanted to give you a chance to wrap it up. And yes. Did you yes. want to finish your thought? Okay, there? I just finished this. Yeah, I just finished this phrase. So what I thought probably at the, at the Vivaldi, they use the same technique. So we're using the two strings, the same notes. Uh, so could be speculated, but in general, I don't use it. This is one. So what a challenge for me to, to make it my first webinar in uh, online and thank you Kristen for helping me and being so kind and that helpful. was great I'm watching your right and hand I've got a lot of work to do <laughs> it was beautiful okay, it really so it was very I'm helpful good. yeah I hope they um, some ideas came in and if you know people enjoy I hope they enjoy it and got some good information for their for their ways you know 
because we are just part of this cathedral of this chain. And I think it's great if we share um, our knowledge and our ideas and that we be more together and strong as a, as a community as the bass players. Absolutely. So I love you all. I love you, love you all, and I'm waiting for, for the next meeting. Sounds great. Thanks so much, Petru. Thank you, Kristen. Take care. And I hope to see you next. Absolutely. Yeah.